What is going on guys and welcome to the first episode of a new scripting series. It's just going to be me going through how to write certain scripts. So we're going to start with the simple stuff and slowly progress over time to the more advanced things like, I don't know, agility or room crafting, things like that. But for just starting out, I think an Alking script is perfect. I think it's a good place to start. You don't have to have watched my first four tutorial videos for this to make sense. However, you should just to get a good grasp of what's going on. There won't be a lot of hand-holding in the series, I just assume that you'll either have the information and knowledge to continue with me, or you're just going to try and copy and paste it and make it work. It's up to you, I encourage you to watch the videos though. But that is all I have, so let's just get into it. Okay, so the first thing I do when I'm starting a new script is kind of decide how I want the script to run and what I need to set up to do it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go over to the magic book settings and find where I want the high alchemy to be placed while doing this. So I think right here is probably the better place. As you can see, I already did this. So the filter that I'm using is just checking off the show combat spells. You get rid of those, it places this up pretty well with this inventory slot. So now that that's set up, and you don't have to have the entity hider on or anything like that since this is such a simple script and it's really just dealing with your inventory. So we can go over to our notepad document or whatever text editor you're using. And this is kind of the boilerplate that I use for um, you know, script to script. I don't always have something like this, but a lot of times I do. And it just makes it kind of quick and easy to set up the beginnings of a script because most of the time this is the stuff that I bring in. I always start out with the instructions at the top, comment it out, so I know how to run the script, what settings I need to change on RuneLight and RuneScape. And then I also have, you know, my variable declarations and the user input for you know, deciding how many inventories to do or how many ALKs to do, etc. And then the global variables is something I've started incorporating because it makes things a little bit smoother to have one variable that's outside of everything that changes that helps to count laps or you know also count uh, alks and things like that then down here we have the one which actually starts the script with the loop inside of it two to reload or to restart it and three just to close it out you can make those whatever you want so now that we have everything kind of set up i like to fill out the instructions before i do anything so while it's fresh in our minds we know that we have to Go to our mage book, go to the filters, and filter out the combat spells. So we're going to type that in, filter out combat spells. And then the next thing we want to do is line up the alkable with the spell. Pretty simple if you've ever alk, this is something you do anyways, but we want to add it in just so we know everything. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the variable section. Let's start with the global variables before we do anything. So we know that we want to make this to where it takes an input from the user and says this is how many alks we want the script to do and then close. So we want a first global variable to be something called inv count, inventory count. So let's type global in front of that and make that a global inv count and then set it equal to zero if I can do this right. So now we have a global variable called inventory count or inv count set to zero at the beginning of the script. So the minute you open this, this is going to set it to zero. That's where we want it because you haven't actually out anything yet. So you want it to start at zero so it can count up. So now we want to declare our next couple variables that are going to be done before the script itself actually starts, which is when you enter the one and start the whole thing. So now we're going to take the input from the user by using an input box. We'll call it the inv limit, and this is the number that we're going to be comparing the inv count to to see if it matches up. That's what you're going to input. We'll call the box the number of inventories, and then a little message to prompt you. Where I said we'll call it the number of alks. And we'll type enter the number of alks you'd like to complete. And that's it. Okay, so now we're going to move down. Somewhere down here, we're going to do a pound sign single instance force. This isn't completely necessary, but it'll makes it to where you can't open two copies of the same script. So at this point, we're going to go to save this wherever we want. I'll save it on my desktop for easy access. Save it as all types. And we'll say alking.ahk. Save. Now we can save it as we go. We don't have to worry about losing any progress. 
Now, before we get started in the actual script, there's one more thing I like to incorporate in every one of these, and that's functions that I bring from script to script. For the sake of this video and for this script, there's only one function that I want to bring in, and that's the logout function. And that does exactly what you think it would do. It's a function that just forces your character to log out. So I'll bring it in from another script that I have. Okay. So I'm not going to explain this because I explain it in my tutorials. And if you're interested in how this all works, you can definitely go check those out. They're very comprehensive and they cover it all. Um, basically, all this does is randomly picks a coordinate around this door, clicks it, and then clicks the logout button. That's all it does. It's very simple, but I bring it with me from script to script, so just I have a function to call back to when the script is done. And of course, all these values will not work for you. You're going to have to pick your own, which isn't super difficult either. Okay, so now that we have all that out of the way, we can go down and actually start working on the script itself. So if we go over to where the one starts and go into the loop, and this is where we're going to be working pretty much from the rest of this. So we're going to want to declare our random variables first. This is going to be things like the actual high alk button. So we'll say high alk spell. And I'll call it high alk spell and item because it'll be pretty much in the same section, ideally. And then we'll do our random sleeps. I like to kind of keep that separated so I can just look back, know what I need to change, add, or whatever. So for the high alk section, we're gonna say random. We're just gonna call this x1 and y1 for simplicity. Now, because I don't want it to move a lot, between because typically when you're alking you don't move your cursor left or right or up and down very much just maybe in between occasionally if you're not really paying a lot of attention we're going to have it click in an area where we know that it'll work with both the high alk and the item so we'll click here and we know that's as far right as we can go with the high alk spell and the u longbow so that's going to be the right section of our x so that'll be 721 then we want to do the left section. So we'll do that here. And we know that that's about as far left as you can go with the spell. We're going to see that's 708. So our X is spanning between 708 and 721. And we're going to do the same thing for the Y. So... Go to the top of where the high alk spell still counts. See that is 315. And then to the bottom of the high alk spell, you'll see that that is 334. So that's all you need for the actual sections on the screen itself. Now we're going to do the random sleeps. Now these are pretty basic too. We don't need very many because this is such a simple script. So we'll call this one A150. Now this is going to be a random sleep of 150 milliseconds between a certain period and a bigger period. So we'll say 130 and one, say 170. That gives a pretty decent randomization there. Then we're going to do another random, and this is going to be the length of time it takes for one alk to complete. And then we'll call this 2400. That's about the time it takes. And we'll kind of do the same thing. We'll say 2401 to let's say 2601. Now that's a 200 millisecond difference. It's not quite as drastic percentage wise as the A150, but it's pretty good and it's going to keep the ALK still working properly. So now we can move to the actual script and we're going to say mouse move x1, y1 at a speed of 3, sleep A150 so everything stays caught up, click, sleep A150, click, and then sleep the A2400. So this is going to move it over to where the, and you're going to want to start on the magic book, which I guess I should put up in the instructions. Even though, again, it's pretty common, but you still want to put all this out there so you can't screw this up when you do it yourself. So we're going to say, uh, start with magic book open. 
Okay, so back down here, the first thing it's going to do is move over to the high aux bell. It's going to sleep 150 milliseconds, click it, sleep on another 150 milliseconds, click the U longbow, wait the 2400 milliseconds for the action to fully complete, then do it again. Now because it's randomized, it's going to move every single time it does this, which can be good or bad. It's kind of up to you. If you don't want it to do that, all you got to do is take out the randomization and just have a static value. It's alking. It's a pretty high ban rate thing no matter how you do it. This, in my opinion, is just slightly better than just a straight up auto clicker. Okay, so now that the script is functional, we need, we need to go down here and make sure it logs out when it's done. So if we only have 3,000 alks or whatever, we want to make sure this only goes for 3,000 times or whatever number you pick. So then now we need to compare our, our alk counter. So we'll say alk counter. Now that this is done, we need to add to our inv count. I call this inv count. I'm used to just doing inventories. I don't do a lot with alk, so that's probably why it seems a little weird. But inv count, so that adds one to our global variable that we did up here. So now this is a one, and this is going to continue to count. So each time it does this, it's going to add one. Then we're going to compare that inv count. If inv count equals inv limit, or is that what I called it? Inv limit, yep. Now we're gonna have this log out. Sleep for say, let's say a thousand. It doesn't need to be random because this is just the end of the script. Sleep for a thousand, then send a message box saying script complete. Invent oh Alex completed. And because we're using this within a string, we need to have the percent signs to pull the exact value out of the variable in count and then add the exit app section so now it's going to go through this and it's going to say okay every single time it completes an alc it's going to add one to the counter then it says does that counter equal the amount that you set in the beginning if it does log out send you the message say how many you completed exit it now we need to handle if that's not true because it's not always true. So we're going to have an else statement. Else. Continue. Now continue basically just forces the script to go back to the top and start over again. Since this is within a loop, it just goes back to the beginning. This isn't necessarily needed, but it forces everything to function the way it should without any kind of issue. So let's save this. Control save. Go to wherever it is for us, so we'll say desktop, alking.ahk. You'll see that it asks how many number, the number of alks we'd like to complete. Let's say 15. So now that you've entered it, the script is waiting for your input and you to hit one for it to actually begin. It's already started, the inv count's already set to zero. So we'll go to the mage book, hit the one key. And there it goes. Now important to note here that one key is that the top section of your keyboard, not the number pad. That's completely different. So as you can see, it functions. It moves it from left to right, up to down between the clicks, but not between the high alc and the U longbow. So one thing to note here with this script and is something that I've been aware of is that the timing is a little weird with alking and to get it perfect would make the script not randomize at all. So eventually, and kind of periodically, it will mess up and click too early or too soon or too late, things like that, and it'll kind of fail. It'll always correct back to the high alc screen, but something to note there, eventually, just because it says it completed, say, 15 alcs, in this case it did, it may not actually. It may have been more like 12 that it completed, but 3 failed or something like that. But anyways, you saw that it completed 15, it logged out, and we're done. So like I said, this script can be improved a lot by somebody who really wants to put the time and effort into it. Like I said, it's alking. I mean, it's not something you should be using to 99 in any respect with the amount of methods there are nowadays anyways. So just to kind of reiterate, 
If you guys haven't watched them, you should definitely go watch my first four tutorial videos. I'll link the first one in the end. They kind of explain what's going on here, how this all functions, and I walk you through creating a really easy power miner. Also feel free to check out my botting to max with AHK series. We're getting to the point where the account's getting way up there. It's got several 99s. If you haven't seen that, it will also be at the end of the video. And again, this is not the best script out there. It is also not going to guarantee you won't get banned. It's still breaking the rules. This is just a slightly better alternative than using the standard injection bots like OSBot or whatever. But that's all I have for you guys today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. The link to my Discord is down in the description. There's a thousand people in there. Everybody's willing to help. If you have any questions or comments about any of this stuff, feel free to join in there. And I will see you guys in the next video.